bud? Can we just, for a sec? So judgy. <laughs> Look how judgy he is. Gonna... Boop ya. <laughs> he is not amused. Not amused at all. <laughs> Summer breeze. It makes me feel fine. Well, it's my patient cat. I don't know how to pronounce this girl's name, but it's fine because she doesn't know how to pronounce my name either. Aurabux? Aurabux? A U R A B U X. Aurabux? I guess, yeah, Aurabux makes more sense than Aurabux. It's just B U X books, yeah. I guess if you have an accent, it's not mine. Because <laughs> everyone has an accent, huh? <laughs> we think it's Aurabux or Aurabux. I'll put her link below tagged me in the spring cleaning 2020 challenge which I don't know if she made up herself because I can't find any other videos and it wasn't like written down she just kind of had all these tags in the video so I had to watch it several times to make notes obviously but she's challenged me to spring clean and unhaul a whole bunch of books but I decided that actually I would unhaul two books per prompt because I've just bought a whole bunch of books like they're all arriving for the owls magical readathon so I need space for them I need space to put my books away this is a prime opportunity to get rid of a whole bunch of books that I don't want or didn't read or won't read and make some beautiful space on my beautiful bookshelves for some more beautiful books because let's be honest next month when we're allowed to leave the house again guess where this bitch is going straight to the independent bookshop that's exactly where she's going she's so excited she's talking about herself in third person let's have a look at a few of the prompts and a few of the books that i will be getting rid of now one or two of these have been bagsied by other people already but for the most part the books will be in my description and i will continue editing my description every time i have got rid of a book so if there's a book in here that you're interested in drop me a comment or a message and hopefully i can get this book to you i can't take them to the charity shop because the charity shops aren't open so if they're still here by the end of lockdown that's where they'll go so you've gone to the end of lockdown if you would like one of these books you're more than welcome to them the first prompt is a book you rated low so we have two books here we have one manga and one non-fiction now the manga i spoke about recently when i said i was starting to read children of the whales and i said the only other manga i've read this year is beautiful creatures and i couldn't stand it the story's a mess and it just wasn't for me but i know that there are quite there's quite a big following for beautiful creatures and it is a beautiful copy i just can't stand the story so i rated it quite low don't need it on my shelf anymore and the other one was writing successful textbooks i think i nailed it i was really disappointed with this book because this is less about writing the successful textbook and more about trying to sell the textbook and it talks about what like what platforms to use but the first two chapters were all i really needed and then after that it was just kind of a waste of my time because i know once i've written the book what i want to do with it sales wise i just this was just a waste of time for me and it was quite frustrating that i'd spent even the one pound fifty on it from a charity shop when this wasn't what it said on the cover i was expecting it to be almost like a how-to guide for how to write a textbook and it just wasn't it was how to sell your textbook which there is a lot of information freely available on the internet such a weight not to have these on my shelf anymore prompt two is two books that you changed your mind about i have very different books on this one you may be more upset about than the other belgravia has recently been turned into a tv series this is written by julian fellows who's the same guy who wrote downton abbey i desperately missed downton abbey and decided maybe i'd like read some of the books that he's written and I just couldn't really get into it and I thought well, maybe the time will be right and I'll come back to it and again I just never did and now the TV series is out I probably never will I'll probably just focus on the TV series if and when I get around to it I do enjoy historical fiction but this was just too wishy-washy for me it was a bit too light and I just I wasn't interested in the politics it's a lot of family drama which is great on screen I don't mind digesting that in small chunks but it just wasn't for me in book so whilst I was really excited when I first bought it I have no interest in reading like finishing reading it and the lovely bones i'm getting rid of from my shelf purely because as much as i really enjoyed this book and i really enjoyed trying my whole way through it 2020 is not going to be a year for tears in books i don't want to read books that are going to make me cry anymore i want to read books that make me happy or excited or scared but i am not going to go out of my way to read sad stories anymore and a murder mystery about a dead child is just you know what i'm saying get rid of that negativity about it straight out of the way and just 
get that off my shelf. Because it does, it makes me sad just to look at it. It's a very sad story, but again. The irony of saying you're not going to cry at books anymore and the fact that you teared up yesterday. Look, okay, Crescent City got me. I didn't expect it to, but it did. But it is not the same. I did not go into it thinking this book's going to make me cry. Okay, I kind of did because the internet told me it was going to happen. But I thought, well, like two chapters out of an entire book is one thing, but an entire book designed to make you cry? I'm not here for it anymore, Kieran. Life's too short. The interlude, I'm just going to get a close up of the cat's face while he's asleep. Because he looks so damn precious. I love him. I love him so much. It's fine because I'll be editing this now, so we'll just get rid of all the silly noises that I make because no one needs to see that. Maybe a few, I'll keep, I'll keep a few of them in just for context, but genuinely the most patient cat on the planet. Prompt three is a series you will not be completing. Now, I feel like I'm being really unfair with these two books, but partly it's because there are only like five or six series that I've started in 2020. The rest of the series I've started in previous years and either I'm halfway through, so therefore I feel emotionally committed to these ones, or I've already finished those series and I've read quite a few standalones. So going through the series that I wasn't really interested in completing as of 2020 was really tricky. And it had to be two that weren't bad. I, I, I'm not, I'm kind of disappointed these are not going to be on my shelves anymore, but I'm also not emotional. I don't feel obligated to keep them either. Like I'm not so committed to them, if that makes any sense. So I'm kind of, because I was a bit neither here nor there, that's why I was like, right. And then I don't need them. I don't, if I'm not sure whether I want to continue with the series or not, I just won't continue. We have The Truth Witch by Susan Dernard. I read this shortly after I read Serpent and the Dove and that was a mistake because those books, the openings are so very, very similar that I just don't think I gave this the due that it deserved. Having said that, that's the only reason I've kept it on my shelf is so that I can read the rest of the series and then kind of hopefully it'll improve. But to be honest, I'm just not interested in it enough. I just don't think it held my interest even as the story progressed as much as I liked the dynamic I don't know it just didn't do anything for me as much as there wasn't anything wrong with it as much as I didn't dislike it just don't need it on my shelf anymore so I'll be unpulling that one and the other one is Children of the Whales again I only read this I finished this two days ago so it really wasn't that long ago again there just wasn't enough in this for me to go yeah that's a series I want to commit to maybe it's manga maybe manga's just not for me maybe I'm making a sweeping assumption based on two mangas that I've read this year so we'll give manga a longer stint but I just don't think Children of the Wilds is for me. It was a story in four parts and I wasn't really interested in any of the plot development. It was either too slow or it all happened all at once and I just wasn't intrigued enough to continue with it. Like I said ne th there's nothing wrong with either of these. I'm not slating either of these books they're just not for me and they're series that I just I think because with Children of the World there's quite a few books in that series already I think and Truth Witch there's five books but, or there will be there's three books out already and two more to come I don't want to commit to five books for a series that I thought was mediocre they are also going in my unhaul pile next is two books that you did not finish if you've watched my last month's wrap up you know that The Essex Serpent didn't even pick it up didn't want to look at it it makes me sad so this was the perfect prompt to get a shot of that this has already been bagseed by Faye at Books and Chocoholic, so this is the only one at the moment that is not on the help yourself to it list. There's that one, and the other one is Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. Now I had a really great conversation with someone on Twitter about all the amazing things about Asking For It, but much like with Lovely Bones, 2020 is not going to be the year where I read books that I find really emotionally hard hitting. I don't want the emotional taxation of reading a story about a girl who's sexually assaulted and no one believes her, and that just, I can't it was too problem problematic and not the kind of cheerful problematic where your boyfriend's just a psycho. It was kind of, you know, it was it was hard and I just, I can't make happy and upbeat content if the books I'm reading make me cry all of the time, okay? It's not what I'm here for. It's not what 2020 is about. A book that you have multiple copies of. This is a bit of a strange one because again, I have fiction and I have a non-fiction. The fiction is Philippa Gregory's Lady of the Rivers. I don't know why I have two copies of this. I think I was gifted it by two separate people over two separate birthdays. I have read it, it's okay. Philip Gregory's not my favorite, but I do like the adaptations they turned into TV series. So every now and then I will dip back into these because they're just harmless historical fictions. They're quite easy to get through. They are thoroughly researched and she obviously knows her stuff like it is most classic of historical fiction so it's quite fun to read 
but I don't need two copies of the same Philippa Gregory on my shelf. That doesn't need to be here anymore. And the other one I have two copies of is Beginning Theory because I studied this at university and then when I had did my masters I needed this book and then I couldn't find my copy so I bought a second copy for like a pound and now I have two copies because I found my original copy. I don't really have two copies of any other books. I, I'm not the kind of person who buys multiple copies of their favourite book. Maybe I should be, maybe that's what I'm missing out on. But I have two copies of Alice in Wonderland, I have two copies of Pride and Prejudice and again both of those were because they were gifted and then I have paperback copies of the classics I studied that are full of my notes and then a few canvas copies of classics but I don't, for me, that's they're, they're different. It's not a case of having two copies for the sake of having two copies. I have one copy that is pristine and one copy that is full of notes and like bits of paper and post-it notes and stuff that I needed when I was at uni that I quite like looking back through and having a look at you know the notes I made and especially because I'm using some of them when I'm doing my gothic fiction workshops and things I actually find those notes really useful because it means I can just pick and choose what I want to talk about and it's all there for me so I didn't want to get rid of any of those these are the only two and I really considered keeping beginning theory even though I have a spare copy but just in case I needed another copy but there are students out there that need this more than I do so if you're all going to study English literature or language I will literally just post this to you if you just PayPal me the postage because these books are hella expensive. Okay, the next two prompts are books that you will never actually get to. Now these are two more charity shop buys. What you'll notice going forward with the rest of these prompts is a lot of these books I bought when I was not actually reading. So I bought a whole bunch of books from the works, from charity shops, from Tesco's, just in the hopes that something would spark my love of reading again and I'd forgotten, I think, just how much I loved fantasy because I was trying really hard to write fantasy and teach at the same time and I wasn't reading and I think I was just trying to read anything I could get my hands on but the problem is is none of these books even remotely interest me now because I bought them in a time when actually my mental health was not amazing and I think I was just picking up any kind of pretty cover or book that looked mildly interesting without actually thinking am I interested in that book or is it just marketing working do you know what I mean we have it's not me it's you and look at me these are both contemporary stories about women living in City lives and shenanigans happen and I'm not interested in either of them. This one I must be either a charity shop copy or a works copy because it has half of its front cover missing. It raises tantalizing questions about identity and reality in contemporary western culture. No thank you! The next two are books you bought for the hype and again I think I just bought these in a time when I wasn't really reading a whole bunch because they're romances. <laughs> How to be single I bought because the film had just come out and everyone was going crazy over it. I saw this copy in Tesco's and was like, I think I might read the book first and see what I think. But I've been single for a hundred years, so I don't need to know how to be single. I've got it down pat. And the other one is by Louise Petland, World Like Me. I was watching a lot of her content when she wrote this. It was just the kind of thing I'd watch about six or seven videos on a Sunday and I would just like blow through months of her content at once. And I think I just was like, yeah, no, I'm going to buy her book and I'm going to support her and that's fine. Except it's not a genre I would ever buy. It's a contemporary romance about a woman and her daughter. I know it's not based on her life, but it feels very much like her life. It feels very much kind of cutesy and sweet and contemporary and very much a beach read. And do you really think you could see me sat there reading either of these? Is that a thing you can see? Okay, the next one is two books you bought for the cover. I'm never gonna read these. But the covers are beautiful. So The Stranger Diaries, I really like the stark of the white and black and then the green flowers. I thought that was really, really beautiful. The description did kind of sell it to me, so utterly bewitching. This atmospheric, intricate thriller, a pitch-perfect modern gothic, chilled my blood and warmed my heart, and unforgettable as it is original. I feel like it should be of interest to me. I just don't want it. But I bought it because it was pretty, and I'm never gonna read it, so. That can go. Although having said that, I might give that to my mum. I feel like this is straight up her street, but. but. And then this one, I actually know absolutely nothing about. I just bought this because it was in Sainsbury's and it had a really gorgeous cover. I just loved the paint, considering war fiction is really not my thing. I don't know why I picked it up. I was having a weird couple of years where I just picked up whatever I thought was pretty and thought, I'll read that one day, and then just never did. The next prompt, those two books probably could have gone in as well, was books you know nothing about. The last two in the what was she thinking when she bought this series is the year of the rat which i think is a ya contemporary i mean just look at that front cover no thank you and the other one is jonathan holt's the abomination I don't actually know what this story is about but i just assume it's going to be that kind of hyper masculine it's got murder in it I mean, if, if you read it, let me know and tell me what it's about, but I probably won't listen. So I'll just zone out and pretend and just do that polite nod that people do. Like, oh, I'm a good person, I promise. 
Okay, the last prompt is a book you did not buy. So I have another non-fiction here, The Rainforest of Learning. This was given to me by a teacher. And I'm not a teacher anymore, so I don't need to know about learning. I don't think. So if there are any teachers out there watching, there looks like to be some quite interesting stuff in here, but nope, don't care. And the other one is The Nearest Thing to Crazy, which was an arc given to me years ago and I just never read. I don't even know what the story is. The hand scares me a little bit. Looks exciting though, I guess. And then of course the prompt is to tag other people in the challenge. Now, what aura box? Aura box? No. What she said was that obviously she, you can tag people in it, but if you don't want to get rid of any of your books, if you want to keep your books, that's absolutely fine. So what I'm gonna say is, if you decide to do this challenge, please tag me in it and let me know. I'd love to watch your content, but I am not gonna force this upon anyone who is not looking to spring clean. For me, my life is just chaotic energy all the time. So, I mean, even the way I said chaotic energy, there was chaotic. Chaotic energy. <laughs> You made the cat jump. You frighten him. My life's a chaotic mess all the time. Anyway, so doing a deep clean or a spring clean, it just kind of settles my soul. And getting rid of 20 books, oh, that felt so good. So yeah, if there are any books in this list that you would like, like I said, drop me a message. I hope you've liked and subscribed. I hope you've actually liked this video because I'm editing them myself now. But myself? I've got more than myself. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I think I've worked out why. When I get to the end of the video, I just say, have a nice day in such an intense way and it's because I've fought over every other stumble just trying to get the outro out that by the time I get to have a nice day I'm so done with my own shit. I hope you've liked this video, I hope you've subscribed because you enjoy my content and I hope you have above everything else a nice day. <sighs> I think I nailed it. <laughs> You can press the button now.